What is up guys, back again with another Paladins tier list video. In this video I'm going to be covering all the supports, or for the support class, for the most recent update for Paladins 2.01. Um, just a quick thing I want to say, thank you guys for all the support on the last video. If you guys missed the last video and if you're new and this is the first time you see my channel or any of my content, uh, I actually did a flank tier list for 2.01. Um, for my last video if you guys want to go check that out if you did not view that yet or see that yet you guys thanks for all the support that is absolutely insane I did not expect that video to do so well um, all those all that support tells me you guys want me to keep continuing doing these videos so I'm gonna keep continuing these videos stuff like that and then whatever so just wanted to say that but if you guys want to show some support in this video as well leave a like if you didn't do enjoy if you are new subscribe if you guys want more videos like this in the future I'm gonna be doing some gameplay videos here the the patch actually released next week I think sometime next week so I'm probably gonna be like about two weeks before I can do like any gameplay so I'm gonna try that out again and see how that does on the channel so um, with probably like Andro or some other new stuff uh, the new Koga build I really want to try some new Koga builds whatever but if you guys want to aim like that stuff then subscribe if you do not want to miss it. I'm going to get right into this tier list. Um, not really as much to cover in this video, so this video probably won't be my, like as long as the other one, but there's some stuff I want to talk about. Um, I think you guys, if you didn't, if you missed the 1.8 uh, tier list video, I pretty much did for like everything. There wasn't, it was just the entire tier list for like every single class of damage, sport, tank, and flank. So if you missed that, I'm pretty much just referring to that throughout this video like I did for the last few as well um, there is no longer in my opinion no longer an SS type healer they did change the item shop so I think healers a little bit did get a little bit better so you can run like things like Kronos and morale boost more stuff from the utility category stuff like that can overall help you a lot first one I want to talk about is Furia Furia didn't really get too much changes I don't think she didn't even get much changes honestly they got rid of Celerity. Um, they gave her some new cards. Um, I mean, Hollowed Sight is like filler, but you're not going to be using it on like a, a full out like healing Solar Blessing set. Um, I'm going to be honest with you guys as well. I really don't play support too much. I think the, if I do play support, I'm usually playing Furia um, or I'm playing Genos or Pip. They're like the top three supports I do play. Um, and if Fury is banned or taken, then I'll probably play like Ceres or Ying yeah, for like a main healer. Um, and the only reason I really play Genos is because in casuals, nobody wants to choose a tank. Nobody plays frontline in casuals. And if you don't have a healer, you pretty much just get stomped in casuals. So I end up using, usually having to play like a healer. And I think the best healer for like a, like a triple damage or like a triple flank, one DPS comp or stuff like that with something just like a comp without like any front line and only like one support um Genos is going to be the best you're going to have the best chance of winning at least in casuals because nobody wants to play front line with Genos and especially after this patch drops Genos is going to be a little bit more viable in my opinion just for those types of comps mainly in casuals you ain't going to really be seeing that in like ranked uh, because in ranked people at least try to choose a main healer most of the times unless they they're stupid and they choose Genos when there's like shit that's really good available like Wendaba or Ying or something like Sarah's even Grover's still available and they choose choose Genos for some reason I don't know I'm not gonna rant on that anymore I'll talk about Genos when I get there uh, Furia I think Furia is a solid S plus I actually think I had her at S or an S minus in the 1.8 patch 1.9 I did, did not do a, do a patch but they actually reversed uh, or do a video for that but they actually reversed pretty much the nerfs they gave her to her um, I think Cherish or her, her, main, her like secondary heal or her, her main healing pretty much not the solar blessing but her main heal I think they reverted from 3 or 4 or something I think 4 down to 3 seconds or like 3 to 2 seconds one of those two um, with cooldown it's, it's still around like 2 3 seconds and with chronos you stack that I think it lowest you can go is I think like 2 seconds so that ain't too bad I think she's at the point especially with the new item shop that she's on the level of a Damba and a Ying Having the ability to run morale boost, which is going to be absolutely insane. It's something I've been wanting to do with Furia, and I think really something that she's been, she's been lacking, and I think would really help her out, is being able to run morale boost and Kronos on like the same, like in the same match. 
like right now currently 149 you have to run pretty much chronos to keep the healing output up otherwise you kind of get stomped and your team kind of gets stomped if you're not able to put the healing output up over the match duration so i think right now in 2.01 when it does drop on consoles in about a week or at least now what people what i've been seeing in the P pts um having the ability to run morale boost and chronos is really going to help furia Having the Solar Blessing as well, one of the best healing things in the game. Even with Cauterize 3, you're still getting a shitload of healing in the Solar Blessing. So, again, if you're going to want a main healer, Fury is that main healer. And uh, she's probably the best healer I do play as well. Probably the main healer. And probably the only healer I mainly play. Unless, like I said, Genos or Pip. It's what I usually play. Or if, I, if Fury is taken, or we're banned in ranks, then I'll probably play like a Ceres or a Ying or something like that. So... But if I'm playing a healer, I'm playing Furia. She's just so fun to use. Her ult is amazing. Um, in Flame, giving you that 8 seconds, you pretty much just destroy a team. If you're a coordinated team, you pretty much just destroy. Set it up on a point fight, and you're going to have a really good advantage. Um, next I want to talk about is... Um, I'm just going to go in order here because I really want to scroll. I'm going to talk about Grok next. Uh, Grok. Grok, Grok, whatever, whatever you want to say it. Bye. Um, Spirit's Domain got a buff. Uh, it's pretty much the one I think you can actually heal your allies with your with your Lightning Staff. I mean, is anybody really honestly going to try this? Yeah, I'm sure people are going to try it out, but it, there's really no reasoning in running it still. 20% increased healing, yeah, you get a little bit more healing, but with Cauterize, you still ain't going to be healing that much. Especially with, like, Cop 2, so... I still think to Totematic War is still going to be his best ability. I think the real issue with Grok and the reason why I have him at A is his totem, his main healing, his totem, which has a thousand health, I think. I think it has a thousand health. Uh, don't quote me on that because I don't, I've never used Grok, like, ever. He's, that's what, hence why he's level 5. I have never barely even used him. Um, yeah, he has an amazing ult. I think one of the things that, if he wasn't, if he didn't have the ult that he had, and I think, like, the output of his totem, when the totem is still up, and not destroyed like instantly. I think that's the only good things about him. His ult is amazing. And he has one of the best alts for support wise in the game. Right alongside Furia and I think Ying and Tomba. And I guess Grover. Um, in the game. So. I mean his ult's amazing. Great ult. I think the one thing that's really holding his, him back. Is his totem. His main healing from his totem. His totem legit gets like destroyed instantly if you're playing against a good team they know how to destroy the totem and no matter where you place the totem they're going to seek out the totem like after the first like two or three seconds and it pretty much gets blown up and destroyed instantly to the point where you're going to have no healing again healing again apart from your alt so that's one of the real issues with grok i think if they really want to buff grok they give his his totem at like a three second immunity when it's first placed down put that put that into its base kit even if they want to like increase the a cooldown of his totem by like one or two seconds just for that like three second invulnerability or immunity to damage for his totem i think that would really help him bring him up to a higher tier but right now i think he's still an a i think i had him at like a i had him at a b last time so i brought him a up a little bit just because the in-game cot is out of the game now with death and taxes being gone and stuff being built into loadouts but i still think he's probably one of the worst healers in the game in my opinion if you're going to be choosing like a main healer I was saying he's insanely bad because his ult is still one of the best ults for a support. And it gives you a lot of advantage. I'm just saying that his healing, his main way of healing gets destroyed too quick. And, uh, yeah, whatever. I really don't use him too much, so if there's somebody that uses him a lot more and would like to insinuate on what I'm trying to say in the comments, that'd be great. Um, who else? Grover. Grover is one I actually want to talk about as well. How far are we in? Nine minutes ain't bad. Uh, Grover, they got rid of efflorescence. Um, efflorescence got they don't they remove the boost to efflorescence, efflorescence and the blossom range. Blossom actually restored I think like eighty or it sort of restored like way more health. I think it was double the health than it normally restores. They just gave it the range. They didn't keep the, like the health restoration on the blossom when you you chose efflorescence in one point nine. Which I think is a slight nerf, but at the same time, it allows you to run like an ability like Deep Roots, which gives your team an, a huge advantage 
being able to run somebody for like one or two seconds. So at the same time, I, I don't think it's really a nerf at, or a buff. I think it still kind of plays itself out as like a neutral, in my opinion. I'm just going to keep Rover in an S. I think I had him at an S plus or something like that last time. I'm not quite sure. I think he was an S or something like that last time as well. So I'm just going to keep him at an S. Or if he was an S plus, move him down to S just because of the efflorescence. Uh, change. He has a he has great cards, and they gave him a new card, which I think is going to be a, a pretty good filler card if you really want it. Drop him below 50% health grants a 150 health shield for three seconds, which I think has some viability. Is it going to be like a main card where you run like four or five points into in your loadout? No, but I think it's going to be a good filler card if you do need something. Um, and yeah, I'm not really going to talk about McGrover too much else because I really don't use Grover too much. I think he lacks offensive presence in my opinion. I'd rather use a Furia. I'd rather use Furia or like even a Pip over a Grover in my opinion. I do way better with a Pip or a Furia than I do a Grover. Grover has a great alt as well, in my opinion, but I just don't have no interest in like playing him. I know a lot of people that love playing him, but he just doesn't interest in me very much. Um, who else we got next? Genos, Genos. Um, I will still think Genos is going to be decently well with in-game cut like death and taxes etc from the loadouts being removed as well. I think Genos is going to have a lot more viability at the start in the middle of the game, but towards the end of the game it's going to be to the point where people are stacking cot 2 and cot 3 and um, I think the, the healing is going to be kind of made a little bit more like pretty much irrelevant at that point, but I still think at the beginning and towards like the middle of the game he's going to have a lot more viability. Having that 5%, they give him 5%, I don't know why they just didn't give him to like 10%, give him his whole Celestial Touch upon like his, his like health rest restoration um, on his Astromark, I don't know why they just didn't do that. 5%, yeah, it's, it's an okay amount, if we're talking about like a damage, but for a tank, having 5% extra health, it really doesn't do much, honestly. You stack that with Cot and it's pretty much caught it out at like the beginning, or like towards the middle of the game, so you're not really doing much, what the fuck. I don't know what happened. My bad, my bad. Um, not really going to talk about him much else, I do think he's going to have a lot more vi viability, like I said, he's going to be a little bit better in saying like casuals, because nobody wants to play frontline slash tank in casuals and more than likely everybody's going to be playing flank and especially with Imani being released I'm probably going to end up playing Genos like a shitload of games because nobody's going to want to play healer nobody's going to want to play a tank because everybody's going to want to play Imani and all the new changes for to like Koga and all that like the main changes um, huge changes like all those types of champions Dredge people are going to be want to play Dredge a bunch of other shit that I'm probably going to have to play Genos I mean, Luminary Genos, having that damage boost really helps your team, especially against, as like an off healer with like a main healer. So you have like a, a Furia or a Ying or a Damba or even a Ceres on your team. Um, and having like a Genos that gives that Luminary boost, like a like a really good damage healer, like a Victor, like a Kinesa, something like that. Or, or like a Tyra, a Vivian. Stack that on a Vivian, you're going to be having a pretty much like a tank destroyer at that point. I still think it's going to be pretty good. It's a step in the right direction, but if they wanted to give him a really huge boost, they would have kept the 10% Celestial Touch uh, restoration upon the Astro Mark, in my opinion. What else did they really give him? They gave him two cards that really are just going to be filler. You ain't going to, you ain't going to be using those cards. You ain't going to be using them. Um, what else we got next? Uh, Damba. Dama didn't really see much, like, changes. I still think Dama is one of the most solid healers in the game. If you want to do well in, like, Furia, um, and if you want to, like, do, do well in a game, and if you know how to play Dama very well, Dama in pretty much, like, every situation, every map is going to, to bring really good results and really good healing numbers. Um, if you want a solid, overall, like, one of the best solid, reliable supports in the game, Dama's always been that type of support. I think he's, I kept him at S+. Plus. Uh, for this video, it's because he didn't really see too much change. I still think he's one of the best supports in the game. Really reliable, really solid numbers if you know how to play him. Having the ability to throw a guard and having the ability to heal two people at once, really, really cool. I think the only thing that can really 
give your team a little bit of help is maybe this Venomous Gourd. Do I see? I don't even think that you have like room on like a loadout to even run this card, anyways. I'm not quite sure. I've I've barely played Damba, but if there's somebody that mains Damba, let me know if this card is actually even going to be useful, or, or if it is useful for you, and if you can even fit this on your loadout apart from like filler or like a one or two in your loadout. Because I really don't play Damba, so I really can't speak for anybody that really plays Damba. So overall, this solid, really reliable. I kept him at S+. Plus. He's a, probably going to be staying S+, plus for a long time, unless they change something drastically about him. Um, what else we got? Shit. Moji. Moji's actually going to be getting re reworked into a support. Granted, they don't give an absolute shit about Moji, so that, that's probably the reason why they never changed like anything about Moji. Going to be getting reworked into a support, probably in, within like the next one or two patches. Uh, we got Pip. Uh, I'm actually really sad for Pip because I think Pip's one of my favorite like healers in the game to play. So fun to use. I'm really sad that I actually did not give anything new to Pip. Pip really didn't get anything else. He's pretty much the same old Pip from 1.9. Yeah, he's a little bit more viable because in-game caught from loadouts and death and taxes and stuff like that is taken out of the game now. But like late game, combat medic is going to be pretty much irrelevant like late game when people start stacking caught to like 2 and 3. Um, gonna be pretty much irrelevant, so he has pretty much one irrelevant ability. If they really want to buff Combat Medic, they increase his like 1200 health uh, when it's being used on allies. Combat Medic isn't really worth, if you're gonna be running Pip, you're gonna be running him as a self-healing like damage dealer or a flank Pip. Uh, while your team has like a main healer like a, a Domba Ying or a Furia or like anything up above like an S and S+, plus, any type of these main healers, um, even a Grok on your team, you can run like Pip as like an off healer, like damage flank Pip. I think that's his only viability. He does not have really much viability. Yeah, Mega Potion is decent, but after like caught like one and actually not like caught two and caught three, you're not going to really be putting out too much healing to the point where you're going to be pretty much made irrelevant towards like the middle, late middle stages towards the end of the game. I think the only viability is Catalyst. Catalyst is his best ability, allowing him to put out a shitload of damage. Having some very good mobility with, um, I forgot what you call it, whatever, he bounces around, whatever. Um, weightless, yeah, weightless, that's what it is. With uh, weightless, allowing him to get around, get up, has some uh, vertical mobility as well. He's a lot of loadouts as well, you can make a lot of diverse loadouts with him. I prefer to use Pepper as well, but that doesn't mean, <laughs> that doesn't mean I think you guys know why I prefer to use Pepper over Pip. But anyways, that's pretty much all I really want to say about Pip. If you're going to be using Pip, he's going to be a, an off healer when you're ready, your team already has like a main healer. He's going to be either you're going to use him as a, as a flank or as like a uh, damage, like self-healing damage healer, uh, which I think, I think is his best role. Otherwise, you're not really going to be picking him up over like a Genos even. I think Genos is even better than like if you want a healer. Genos is even better now than Pip in my opinion. If they really want to buff Pip, buff his Mega Potion up to like 20 like 3,000 at least, buff it, buff it up to like 120% healing, buff his combat medic up to like 1,200 on the allies, do something to Pip that, that makes him better. Yeah, he has a cool ult, and a really good ult if you're playing on a coordinated team to where you can like get like multiple tanks and like stuff down below like 1,500 health and get a really easy kill, but apart from that he really doesn't have any viability when it comes to healing in my opinion. If you did not agree with me, let me know in the comment section down below. But I do play a lot of Pip. That's just my honest opinion. Uh, what else we got? I think we have Saris. Yeah, Saris. Gonna move Saris up from an A. I think it was an A plus up to an S. Um, I say I think Saris is gonna be probably one of the really solid healers. I'm not gonna say she's gonna be better than like a Ying or a Furia, but I think she's gonna be really good. Uh, with Mortal Reach, uh, you can run Soul Collector and Avoid Abides. I mean, they, or she put a. I think they put that into a base, base kit actually. Yeah, Avoid Abides actually in the base kit. <laughs> this named ability that she no longer has. Whatever, Mortal Reach and uh, Soul Collector. I think she just hasn't. She has uh, some Agony. Agony is the other one. I still think she's going to be very good. Uh, Definitely. It's gonna have to see how she goes though. I can't really I don't really play too much Saris, so 
we're gonna have to wait and see how it really is once it does release. But so far in the PTS, it works really well, really well. Uh, and the last one we have Ying. I had Ying at SS last time in 1.81. The reason why I'm moving her down to S plus is because you're kind of forced to run Chronos now. You can't run morale boost right away. If you're going to be running morale boost, it's going to be towards like the middle, late middle, or like towards the end of the game. Uh, you kind of have to run Chronos because they nerfed one of her cards. Um, Brittle, which actually is for her life exchange, which kind of nerfed her pretty... A little bit of a nerf. I wouldn't say it's like a harsh nerf. It just makes you, you run Chronos over morale boost at the beginning of the game. You can buy two things from each category, or you can buy multiple things from each category now, so... Overall, Ying's still a solid healer. Life exchange brought her back to life when they pretty much brought that into the game. Still think she's overall solid. She has a great ult. Uh, if you want to make a push um, or win a point fight pretty easy, just pop an ult and you have a really good, you have overall healing for like five plus seconds. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below uh, everything I've covered in this video. Do you agree? Do you not agree? If you did enjoy, drop a like. That'd be great. If you are new, subscribe. Uh, not really too much else to talk about. I'll probably be doing Frontline, and then once Imani is released on here, I'll be doing the damage one. It's probably the one I've been looking forward to do the most. But yeah, I'll see you guys in a future video. Thanks for watching.